How's it going everyone and welcome back to the 23rd go-kart build video of my go-kart build series where I have decided to build a go-kart completely from scratch. Now for those of you who have just started watching these videos, um, go back a little ways to the 21st video and that's where you'll see the go-kart run for the first time and it's been a long process leading up to that point. But now, on the 23rd video, um, well really in the 22nd build video, I kind of caught you guys up with what's been going on on the uh, go-kart uh, in terms of the new torque converter I got. And in this video I'm going to be doing some more work. Now I've kind of just spaced the videos out a little while because school has been so time consuming. Um, but luckily I'm on Thanksgiving break now so I'm going to have a little extra time to devote to the go-kart build. And um, what I'm basically going to be doing today is continuing on where I left off in the last video which was installing the new torque converter I got from GoPowerSports.com. Now that brings me to the point, if you guys are thinking about building a go-kart or if you are building a go-kart and are in need of a place to get parts and different things for the go-kart, Go Power Sports is an excellent place to pick up those parts. They have everything all the way from axle kits to build plans to tires, wheels, torque converters, obviously, you name it, they got it. And they're really friendly, so they'll you know um, be sure to assist you and help you figure out what you need. Um, so. Basically in this video, I'm going to finish installing the torque converter. I'm going to weld up, um, I'll, in a minute I'll show you guys directly what I'm going to be doing, but um, I'm going to weld up some new um, strut bracing in the back just to kind of add to the like angle design of the frame. Um, I'm going to be drilling new holes for the engine mount to mount to because I had to um, move the engine over to work with the torque converter um, and I had to get a new drill bit, so got a new drill bit. And then let's see, what else am I going to be doing? Oh, and then I'm going to be, so I'll show you about, about this in a second, but basically uh, to sum it up, um, I have the axle, right? And then I have another, uh, the U-joint go over the axle. And to hold this axle in place, I use a bolt. Now, um, over the course of driving it for like three times, um, these bolts kind of wore out. And I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, but these bolts wore out and they actually, the torque from, you know, the bolts, and, you know, wanting to move the axle inside the other actually deformed the the hole that I had drilled for this bolt. So I'm gonna have to drill out new holes, which are five sixteenths inch versus a quarter inch, um, because the bolts kind of deformed the holes, and the bolts themselves started uh, deforming and bending. And before, if I would have kept driving like that, they would have just sheared right in half. So um, let's go ahead and get to all the build that I'm gonna do in this video and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so as you can see here, I got the um, go-kart kind of already disassembled um, in the rear section and um, took the tires off. And so basically what I was talking about was, here's the rear axle and these are the holes, it's kind of blurry, but those are the holes that I drilled through the rear axle for these bolts, if I can find one. Did it fall on the ground? Oh, here they are. For these bolts to go through. Now, let me refocus the camera so I can show you more close up. Okay, so as you can see here, these are the bolts that I was using for um, the. So these um, slid down through here. So the U joint, the U joint right here, the U joint slid over this, and then the bolt went through the U-joint and the axle to hold the U-joint in place so the U-joint wouldn't slip on the axle. Now these are just cheap bolts I got from Home Depot and I sure learned why I shouldn't use these. And as you can see, it started to bend and um, also the threads started to actually um, just get sheared away and that's what caused this slippage. So basically even though the bolt was in the, um, in through the through the hole there would still be some play in the wheels and um, if I just kept driving on it it would have just sheared these bolts right in half. Now um, what I did was I went and bought um, grade 8 bolts which is just like hardened metal um, and then I figured out that some of these holes had actually deformed so the the, sh the stress caused by the bolt wanting to push on this hole kind of turned it from a circular shape to a more oval shape. Um, so now what I'm going to have to do is uh, just, so these are quarter inch, so I'm going to have to drill these out to 5 16 And using a bigger bolt will um, be better anyways because it will take the torque a lot better than these small um, quarter inch bolts did. So that's one thing that I'm going to be working on um, 
um, changing today. Also, one other thing I'm gonna be doing is, um, so there's this metal here, so in order for it to avoid it from deforming again, I'm, I got a torch and I'm gonna actually um, harden the metal by heating it up super hot and then quenching it quickly in water, and that rapid change in temperature will actually um, harden the metal and make it stronger. So that's one other thing I'm gonna be doing today. Okay, so then the other goal here is to, um, to drill the new holes for the engine plate. So as you can see, I already have three drilled. So here's the original four, right? So then, um, or was that the original four? Yeah, those are the original four. And so then what I had to do was I had to move the engine from here to over here so the torque converter would have clearance from this plate. And so basically these two holes I used for um, these bolts here. And those are originally because there's another, there's a, a cross beam here going underneath the plate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I drilled, so I marked it out again. I drilled pilot holes because um, my other bit broke. And so um, then I just have to drill this last one and that'll be um, the next step for mounting the engine. And as you guys from, can remember from the last build video, uh, this is kind of the new rear setup I had to build um, from the uh, torque converter being installed. So I had to kind of cut that piece out and then weld up some cross bracing and um, do that so the torque converter would actually fit on the go-kart. Now, I thought this, you know, is it, it's good, it, it functions, but kind of want to make it look a little better. So I had this extra piece of um, a trapezoidal cut metal here. So what I'm gonna do is actually, and I bought some more because I ran out, so I have to cut a new one, but I'm gonna do, kind of a cross piece like that and obviously do one on the other side and that'll kind of play along with the whole like angled look of the metal on the uh, front part of the frame here and that'll I think carry on through the back and make it look a little better look a little nicer and there still should be room for these bolts to um, there's plenty of room for those bolts to go through and uh, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today. And so hopefully once I do all that, some of the problems that I have run into will be taken care of. And um, we'll be good to go and maybe run the go-kart again. Okay, so let me take the time to fill you guys in on what I was doing um, just now. Um, so basically what my first plan was was to drill these holes out like I said to five sixteenths of an inch that no go um, I decided not to do that after trying to do the first one and Having the holes not line up um, And I'm not using I, the drill press I have doesn't work very well and you know I don't have any special mills or high-tech machinery to drill straight holes so that was just a nightmare waiting to happen. That was a nightmare just trying to do one hole because what happened was I drilled out the holes and in the axle, so in this piece right here, and um, so then I had to take my welder, then plug those holes, re-drill new holes um, with a quarter inch hole just so I could get the original bolt to fit back in um, and that was just a nightmare. So not gonna do that. And then the next thing I tried doing was I tried uh, cutting out a little slot in the axle for a key stock, a key uh, to slide in. So I tried cutting out a little slot there and with the grinder, um, but it's just too hard to get it to, to sit right, to, to grind a perfect um, slot for it to sit in. And this metal was only a quarter inch thick, so I'm not working with a whole lot of material. So I'm kind of just sitting here pondering what I should do um, with this to try and because my my dilemma is is the bolts go through here like as you can see on uh, right there oh, that's kind of blurry here let me refocus the camera okay so as you can see I got the bolt going through you can see one end and then the other end and the bolt is not what I'm worried about and the un joint isn't what I'm worried about it's this metal here is what I'm worried about and um, I'm worried about the holes in this deforming since it's only a quarter inch thick. Now I know someone's gonna come on to the video and say, oh you should have used a solid rod. Well, yeah I could have I guess over here, but not over here due to how my um, axle was built with having multiple pieces and stuff like that. So that's what I'm, where I'm kind of at right now, just trying to figure out what to do um, with this. 
One thing that I will be doing is um, I'm going to try and quench this um, metal here, like I said earlier, to make it um, more hardened and make the metal tougher so hopefully it won't deform as easy. Um, so I got a blowtorch over there and so I might try that and um, but I'm kind of just waiting to see, um, trying to just sit and think here what I could do because the key stock wasn't really working and drilling new holes was definitely not going to work. So, um, so yeah, but I'll, I'll um, pick it up, pick the video up right when I figure out what I'm going to do next. All right, so I said screw it with the whole key stock thing. Um, that just wasn't going to work. Uh, so basically, a lot of that play came at, um, from the last part, from these bolts just being crappy and the threads actually like getting squished off. Um, now that I have the grade 8 bolts, I think it should be a lot better. But to make sure that the holes on this part don't deform, what I'm going to do is something called quenching the metal and that is the idea to hardened metal. So basically, I'm going to take this torch, I'm going to heat up the metal on the axle tool, it's like red hot, glowing red, and then I got a bucket of ice water right here and I'm going to dip it in the ice water and hopefully that rapid change in temperature will harden the metal. That's the ideal, um, that's the overall goal behind quenching metal. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that to the axle on each wheel and then um, each piece on here. And so what I'm going to do for here, since I don't want to take the entire axle out, is just heat it up on here and then uh, I'm just going to pour water over it and so hopefully that'll, that'll help. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and light the torch and heat up this part of the axle and then once I I've heated it up for a while, then I will go ahead and um, and quench it in the ice bath I have right here. So, let's go ahead and do that. So while I wait for this to heat up, I'll go ahead and cut the video and then resume once I'm about to uh, dump it in the ice bath. Alright, so after about five minutes, I think I'm going to go ahead and quench this guy now in the ice bath. So when we quench it, it's going to bubble a lot and it's going gonna, it's gonna to harden this metal. Um, I can't tell if it's getting red hot or not because it's daylight out. Um, this is only, you know, can only burn so hot because it's a propane uh, torch. Um, but I think it's getting it hot enough to where it's uh, going to definitely help harden the metal because it's changing color a lot. It's changing the color of the metal a lot. So, um, yeah, I think... Alright, here we go. you do it. So that should be hardened. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other hole now um, after doing this one, uh, the one side, and then I'll, um, I'm just going to do this off camera and then I'll catch up with you guys once I actually start quenching the uh, main axle. That was a little messier than I wanted it to be, but it worked.
Okay, so I just finished quenching all four um, parts of the axle that I thought needed to be quenched. Um, did this side and then that side over there. Made a little, little bit bigger of a mess than I wanted to, but hey, that's part of it. Um, so now the next step is going to be, um, I'm going to move the go-kart out into the center of the garage here so I have a little more space. Um, and then I'm going to weld those diagonal pieces I showed you guys earlier on in the video. So i got to cut one the same length as the other, and then I'll go ahead and weld those in. And then um, after that, I will drill the holes in the engine plate. So we'll go ahead and start with the diagonal pieces. Alright, so i got the pieces all mocked up. I'm going to go ahead and tack weld them in now, and um, should be good to go. I can hear the water hissing or sizzling off that was still left over from when I quenched the other side. So I got this one all welded in. I'll go ahead and weld in the other side and then show you guys the final product. All right, so just finished up welding these new pieces in and as you can see, I think they look pretty good, look pretty symmetrical. And so, like I said before, the reason why I did this is because it kind of continues on the, um, the diagonal angled pattern you see up in the front there. So I think it looks good, it adds a little bit of um, design to the back here because I didn't really like just those two posts by themselves and I think this looks a lot better. Um, so now I'm going to move on to drilling the new holes in the engine plate and then uh, so I have to drill the new holes in the engine plate and then drill a new hole um, in this thing.
All right. Perfect. All right, so now the final step is to switch to the 3 8 inch and drill all the way through with the 3 8 inch. All right, everyone, so finished up um, mounting. So I got the engine, actually didn't tighten it down all the way, but I got it mounted to the plate so I know the four holes I drilled line up perfectly. Um, so yeah, so I got those all put in, got the extra spacers put on. Um, and then I went ahead and put the wheels and tires back on on the rear as well as the U-joints. Luckily the new um, hardened, hardened metal grade 8 bolts um, fit nicely in the U-joints. Uh, they didn't fit as nicely before. They're, I think they're a little bit thicker um, at the part where there's no thread. Um, so I had to kind of drill out all those holes, but they fit nicely now. And um, one big thing that helped me was, so when I drilled these, you know, they're not all drilled perfectly straight. So, um, like the holes only line up with the holes they were originally drilled with. So I, f I started, I marked, uh, like on this one, I marked um, out, so like facing outwards, and then this one is facing inwards, and this is for the left wheel. And so that helps as well, because I would always struggle with trying to line up the holes and which one was the correct position for um, the, for each uh, bolt um, but I think that's gonna do it for this uh, video so I got quite a bit done um, that I want to do I got the holes drilled for the engine plate um, I welded those new pieces on back here um, and then I also did all the um, quenching of all the axles so that was uh, quite a bit done as you can see it's almost dark out now so I've been working on this pretty much all day um, so I got a few pieces to return and a few things I need to get, but everything's going to be closed tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I think before I wrap up the video, I'll just kind of talk about what you guys can expect in the next video. And it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so yeah, pardon the poor lighting. This is actually just my garage light. So um, I'm trying to improvise here before it gets too dark. Um, but basically, yeah, so I just got done talking about all the stuff I finished up today. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in the next video is I'm going to be testing the paint I want to use. So I'm going to be, I have some test pieces of metal, some old scrap metal, that I'm going to prep like I'm, I would be prepping the go-kart. And I'm going to do some test paints. Um, I might get a few different um, spray paints just to test them out to see which one I like the best. Um, so that'll be cool. So I'll get your guys' opinion on what you guys think is looks the coolest and kind of like what color scheme I might be going with. Because I'm gonna go with a few, like uh, not like three different main colors, but like one main color and then like two maybe subtle colors where there's like um, some smaller pieces painted in those. So it kind of changes up the color, so it's not all one color. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that. So paint samples in the next one, and probably talking about maybe adding some body panels, some bumpers, like you see on a shifter cart or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about in the next video, and I might be trying, I might also um, work on getting the torque converter situated, because I have to kind of read the instructions a little more, because there's a few pieces I'm unsure of on how they fit on there, but that's pretty much it. So I think the content for this video is good. Um, the content for the next video is gonna be pretty exciting, pretty uh, cool to you know, hear about the new stuff going on the go-kart. Other than that, Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments about go-kart, anything else, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Um, visit uh, gopowersports.com for any of your um, go-kart part needs like torque converters, um, uh, axle kits, build plans, etc. Um, so yeah, go check them out if you're working on building a go-kart or you're thinking about doing it. And also, have, thanks, have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone, for those that celebrate Thanksgiving, because I know not everyone that watches these videos is from the United States. Um, but if you don't have Thanksgiving to celebrate, have a good weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.